30 years after the publication of his classic and beloved book, Free Play, musician, improviser, performer, and author Stephen Nachmanovich has a brand new book, The Art of Is, which invites us all to bring more improvisation and creativity into our everyday lives. I was so happy to get to sit down with Stephen and have a conversation, and I hope you enjoy this interview. So your book is called The Art of Is. Improvising as a way of life. Can you explain briefly what is the art of is? Ah, well we is here and I is talking to you now and the fundamental condition of improvisation is conversation of course. You may do it with musical instruments and you may do it with all kinds of gorgeous developed, articulated artistic techniques, but conversation is the template for improvising. And we listen to each other, we respond, we respect each other, we shut up while the other person is talking. All of those kinds of interactional things relating to who is in front of you, who you are talking to, what the conditions are, what the room feels like, and all of that. Um, one of the um, big learning moments for me was talking in the 1980s to a dear friend of mine who was a physician, who was a very, what we might call a uh, left brain person, you know, very logical and rational. And uh, he was saying, uh, well, I don't know about all this improvisation stuff and I'm not really an artist. So I just turned it around and said, what is improvisation to you in pulmonary medicine? And he immediately said, seeing the patient who is in front of you, not seeing the chart, not seeing a textbook case, not seeing a generic diagnosis, but really seeing who is in front of you. So what's interesting is this paradox that with the most uh, direct connection to what's in front of you, you often get the most interesting, the most fanciful, the most imaginative responses. Whereas when you try to be imaginative and when you try to go out there in a sense or be entertaining, it's not as interesting. So that's the art of is. So you touched on that idea of performance versus being in the moment and um, a, you're a performer and a musician um, so I know that there's an aspect of practice and planning for all performers but you're also so dedicated to being in the moment in your performances so can you speak a little to how we navigate being well prepared versus being in the moment? Well, that's a great question because uh, like all of these matters, it's a, it's a balance, you know. I mean, one of the alternate titles for the book could have just been the word balance. Many years ago, I, um, I was walking through a music department at the university and you know how they have like little practice rooms? I remember when my sons were little boys, I took them through a place like that, and it was like in the basement of a building, and they had these they had these students playing the piano inside these tiny, tiny little practice rooms with windows. And one of my sons says, "Is this where they send the bad students to punish?" Them? But anyway, so in in one of these universities, there was a practice room that had been converted to somebody's office, and there was a sign on it that said this is no longer a practice room, and somebody had scribbled underneath, now it's perfect. <laughs> so, so to prepare to do things, you know, uh, to practice but never do in performance what you practiced is really interesting. It's really interesting. Uh, the book begins with Martin Luther King, having prepared a speech for August 28, 1963. And he started giving that speech, and then Mahalia Jackson shouts out, tell him about the dream, Martin, because he had talked to her on the phone sometime before about a speech that he gave about dreams that he didn't think worked very well, and 
you know, it kind of fell flat, he thought, you know, and so there it was. So he just took his paper aside and improvised. But, of course, he was improvised, he was improvising over a lifetime background of doing this and knowing what he was going for and the struggle and the work and the pain and all of that was in there okay and so you do that momentary thing that is unpredictable but it's there because you have had a lifetime of experience so what you were just speaking to brings up for me um the idea of making mistakes mm. and um, perceiving uh, an event, a performance, an experience as being a failure because mm. a certain preconceived mm. idea didn't occur. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to how to mm. be in the art of is with our mistakes <laughs> and our failures? Well, Miles Davis says, don't fear mistakes, there are none. And Shunryu Suzuki of San Francisco Zen Center said that life is one continuous mistake. And he was echoing Dogen from the 13th century. And you have to be able to hold those both. They're really both saying the same thing. And you have to hold them both in mind at once. And believe me, the number of mistakes that I make per day and the number of mistakes you make per day and every one of us is so enormous. It's so enormous. And, but life is one continuous process of feedback. I mean, I talked before about uh, conversation as the template for improvisational art forms or creativity in general. And how many times per day have you had a really interesting conversation with somebody and then you realize, like, for this particular person, you stepped over a line and you know, said something that's, that isn't quite right for that relationship. And you step back and you change it and you are able to continue. And um, that's what's important, is to recognize those limits and step back from them and find another limit that's interesting and explore the multidimensionality of our ability to connect with each other. You know? We all are going to continuously make mistakes until the day we die, and we just have to celebrate that and use it as the vehicle for making interesting work that helps other people. Um, you are the author of another very well-known, beloved book about creativity and imp improvising called Free Play that's been continuously published for 28? 30 years. 30 yeah. years! Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, I, do you want to speak a little bit to how the art of is plays with free play? Ah, uh, well, f free play is about the inner and spiritual dimensions of the creative process, and the art of is is about the outer and interactive dimensions of the creative process. So they blend in that way, but those are the two sides, and I think they're both really important, and, um, and you need both sides. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What do you most hope readers will take away from reading The Art of Is? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.